Well, I hope you're ready for this one. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Devoom and their D2 Mic Retro Pixel Art Bluetooth Speaker. The D2 Mic is a really cool Bluetooth speaker and clock that's perfect for spicing up your gaming setup or even having fun with your friends by using the included mic. Not only that, but you can set social media message notifications to appear, use it as an alarm, play games, or even set it to display some beautiful pixel art to liven up your desk space. Plus, by using the included microphone, you can have a karaoke night with your friends or just scare people from across the house. So if you're interested in a great sounding Bluetooth speaker and digital clock, be sure to click the link in the description below to find out more. So today I have an absolutely huge video with tons of news about upcoming video cards from both Nvidia as well as AMD, so let's not waste any time, let's go ahead and get right into this one guys. And the first bit of information actually comes from a WCCF Tech article where it looks like the company Enermax might have accidentally leaked some information about AMD's upcoming RX 7000 series GPUs as well as some upcoming Nvidia cards at the same time. So let's go ahead and take a look at this information. Now, according to WCCF Tech, they state, quote, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070, RTX 4060, and AMD Radeon RX 7950 XT, 7900 XT, 7800 XT, and 7700 XT graphics cards listed by Enermax. And then later on in the article, they go on to state, quote, the RX 7950 XT is listed with 31 watts lower power than the GeForce RTX 4090. The 7900 XT is listed with 10 watts higher power than the RTX 4080, though it is not mentioned if this is the 16 gigabyte or 12 gigabyte variant. The RX 7700 XT is listed at 87 watts lower power consumption than the RTX 4070, whereas the RTX 4060 shares the same power consumption as the 7700 XT. So yeah, guys, it looks like the RX 7000 series, if this leak is to be believed, could actually be drawing significantly less power than the RTX 40 series, which is definitely gonna be some great news for a lot of gamers out there, as I know there's been a lot of concern about the absurd power draw of cards like the RTX 4090, as it seems like every single generation, the power has been continuously going up and up and up for a little while now, and that's definitely been a cause for concern for gamers, and it seems to be only getting worse. Worse. So hopefully this does end up being true because yeah, it would be great to have other options on the market that do draw less power. And speaking of less power, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the leak specs that I put together in this little graph here as I've learned a lot more information recently when it comes to the RX 7000 series GPUs. So first starting off with the specs and taking a look at the RX 7700 XT, this one should be based off of the Navi 33 GPU with 20 WGPs for a total shader count of 5120, a boost clock of around three gigahertz or higher in terms of memory it should have either eight or 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory running at 20 gigabits per second on 128 bit bus for a total memory bandwidth of 320 gigabytes per second. In terms of the cache, it should have either 32 or 64 megabytes. In terms of the TDP, it should be somewhere around 200 watts. Then moving on to the RX 7800 XT, this one should be based off the Navi 32 GPU. It should have around 28 WGPs for a total shader count of 7,168, a boost clock of 2.8 gigahertz or higher, 16 gigabytes of G6 memory running at 18 gigabits per second on a 256-bit bus for total memory bandwidth of 576 gigabytes per second, and in terms of the cache, either 64 or 128 megabytes, and in terms of the TDP, somewhere around 280 watts. Then the 7850 XT, which is basically going to be the full Navi 32 GPU. This one should have 32 WGPs for a total shader count of 8,192. It should have a boost clock of around 2.8 gigahertz or are higher, 16 gigabytes of G6 memory running at 20 gigabits per second on a 256-bit bus for a total memory bandwidth of 640 gigabytes per second. In terms of the cache, 64, 128 megabytes again, and TDP should be somewhere around 300 watts. Then taking a look at the big boy, the 7900 XT, this one should be based off the Navi 31 GPU, have around 44 WGPs for around 11,264 shaders. It should have a boost clock of 2.8 gigahertz or higher, 24 gigabytes of G6 memory running at 20 gigabits per second on a 384-bit bus for a total memory bandwidth of 960 gigabytes per second. In terms of the cache, 96 or 192 megabytes. And in terms of the TDP, around 350 watts, which is actually going to be a little bit lower than I was originally expecting. And then finally, the RX 7950 XT, the full Navi 31 GPU. This one should have 48 WGPs for a total shader count of 12,288, which is more than twice as much as we currently see on the 6900 
XT. In terms of the boost clock, I'm actually expecting around 2.9 gigahertz or higher, as this one's going to have a much higher TDP in terms of the memory. We're talking 24 gigabytes of G6 memory running at 21 gigabits per second on a 384-bit bus for a total memory bandwidth of 1,008 gigabytes per second. In terms of the cache, 96 or 192 megabytes and TDP of 420 watts, which should line up with the leak of being around 30 watts lower than the RTX 4090, which is good news to see. Now, in terms of the pricing and performance, as well as the release date, well, the 7700 XT, I'm expecting it to come in at a price of probably somewhere around $500. In terms of the performance, it should be somewhere around the performance of an RTX 3080 or possibly even higher. In terms of the reveal date, should be being revealed in November and availability sometime in quarter one of 2023. Now talking about the RX 7800 XT, this one I'm actually expecting to come in at a price of around $800. In terms of the performance, I'm expecting at least 20% more performance than an RTX 3090 with the reveal date sometime in January. January of 2023 and availability sometime in quarter one of 2023. Then taking a look at the RX 7850 XT, I'm actually expecting this one to come in at a price of around $900 to $1,000, have performance of around 40% or higher over an RTX 3090 with a reveal date of November 3rd and availability in quarter one of 2023. Then finally taking a look at the Navi 31 GPUs, first the RX 7900 XT. I'm expecting this one to come in at a price of around $1,000 to $1,200, give you around 75% more performance than an RTX 3090, have a reveal date of November 3rd and availability by the end of this year. Then finally the 7950 XT. I'm actually expecting this one to come in at a price between $1,200 to $1,500, have around 85% more performance in the RTX 3090, have a reveal date of November 3rd, and availability should be sometime by the end of this year. So there you have it, guys. There's a whole bunch of new information about the RX 7000 series. So honestly, guys, knowing this information, I would say that if you're someone who's looking at the RTX 4080, 12 gigabyte, or 16 gigabyte especially, I would definitely wait to see what AMD has to unveil because honestly, guys, we're getting really close to that reveal date of November 3rd. So I think it's worth waiting at this point to see what they have up their sleeves as well because I think it could have a major impact on the pricing of GPU in general if AMD does choose to be hyper competitive which they definitely could go ahead and do the question is are they going to do it? Because last time around, I don't think they were quite as competitive as they could have been. So only time will tell whether or not they are going to price their GPUs at a super competitive level. But honestly, guys, either way, I really do think that you should wait. Even if you're buying an RTX 4090, if you're dead set on buying that, I do think it is worth waiting just a couple weeks to see what AMD has. Also, it's looking like, yes, the RTX 4060 and 4070 could actually end up getting revealed. Although I will say if these cards end up getting revealed, it probably is going to be a long wait. Because like I've mentioned in the past, they are going to be trying to clear out their existing RTX 30 series inventory before they roll out any more RTX 40 series cards. So yeah, there you have it, guys. Honestly, I think it's worth waiting, but ultimately it's up to you. Either way you slice it, it's looking like both the RTX 40 series and the RX 7000 series are going to be bringing absolutely insane levels of performance. But hey, that's just what I think. Are you going to be waiting for the RX 7000 series or are you going to be buying an RTX 40 series card? Or are you going to be buying a pre-owned RTX 30 series card? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.